here I am. I got a long walk to the gate to clock in to go to work. I can't even think of the words to say. It's, this is really depressing. So you might as well just go ahead and get it over with. And when you're done, you go home, relax, enjoy a beer. Whatever you want to do. Welcome to Beer Critic. Greetings! Tonight on Bear Critic, we're going to take a trip to our neighbors up north. Try Moosehead Beer from Canada's oldest independent brewery since 1867. Still independently brewed. We'll see how well Canada does. Mexico does pretty good beer. We got to see what Canada can do. Let's see if the North can do as good as the South. Since I'm a Yankee, that almost hurts me to say. <laughs> anyway, as he said, this beer here <clears throat> comes to us via the Polar Express, straight from Kanuckistan. <laughs> Moose Head Lager. Proudly independent since 1867. Should feel right at home in the frosted mug, being from the home of Frostbacks. Yeah. Very pale, very pale. Once again, just like Frostbacks. Yeah. Not a lot of head. That's okay. Yes, I'm going to make a lot of fun of Canada, but I actually have several very close Canadian friends. I'm doing it mainly just to fuck with them. <coughs> there, give her the old sniffer. Yep. Smells like a lager. Smells. Kind of. Almost smells like Budweiser minus the sewage. Kind of, kind of, actually kind of, I was thinking more along the lines of, um, Modelo. It's even, it smells good though. Yeah. I can see Modelo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Main thing for me is, it's not an Anheuser-Busch product and it's a lager. It's probably one of the few lagers we've gotten to try this far that might not have that retardedly bitter bite that you get from brewing beer from sewage uh, treatment system drain <laughs> off. Just like that fucking Bax. Oh. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Turns my stomach thinking about it. All right. It definitely smells good. It does. It just smells really good. Got some slight residual carbonation in it. Not a, not a lot, though. Which leads me to believe that the carbonation that is left in it is natural, not pumped into it. Mm -hmm. well, well, do us proud, Canada. Cheers, Frostback. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Yeah, very nice. Not caring for it, but that's the first sip of goddamn near every beer. Give me a minute. <laughs> Gotta get the old tasters acclimated. Yeah. 
It really does kind of remind me of vanilla because it has that pure flavor that turns to kind of water. Mm -hmm. But I do enjoy it. Yep. Yeah. That was a problem with the taste. There was a nicotine deficiency going on. <laughs> Some reason, the cigarette just goes with beer. I swear we need to get a pack of like Newports or something, heavy menthol for smoking while we're drinking beer. Because he smokes menthols normally, I do not. However, there's just something about having a good menthol with beer. Mm. <laughs> it's a good drink in beer. You can drink it. Doesn't carbonation doesn't you know hurt your throat or anything like that. It's just... This one's middle of the road for me. Yeah. It's not a light enough flavor to sit down and drink a 30 pack in a night. No. But it's not as heavy a flavor as I'd want for sitting down and drinking with dinner or even having it at a barbecue or something. Mm. It's it's not bad, but it's not good. It's just dead center. It's not even meh. It's it's, <laughs> it's fairly uneventful, but... Yeah, I mean... It's definitely not bad, which is a lot more than can be said for a couple of American-made beers at this point. That's no shit. <laughs> However, there's nothing real special about it either. Yeah, it's got your typical piss yellow. Yeah. yeah. And <sighs> in the great frozen abyss of Kanucky Stan. <laughs> Stan. <laughs> where this is... You know, just a normal everywhere has a beer, kind of like Budweiser is here, from what I'm told. This would be a just fine pick up a 12 pack on whatever, for whatever occasion beer, but here where it is an import, so <coughs> damn. So it is more expensive. Mm. Eh. That's all I can say for it. Just, eh. It ain't bad, but it ain't great. You know what the ABV is on this? Um. Doesn't say on the bottom. Doesn't say on the. What about the cap? Who said lager? <laughs> I'm guessing it's not a lot. We need to start researching these a little better and taking notes. <laughs> Probably. It's all good though, and you know, a beer that's lasted 150 years and not either A, gone by the wayside, or B, been bought by some multinational conglomerate that couldn't give a flying fuck about the original recipe or the actual flavor of the product or anything else other than just profits and selling as much as possible. <clears throat> Anheuser Busch. Um, it, it's it. I I'm impressed. Just yeah. in the middle of the road of it, they haven't tried to add a bunch of shit to make it more of a wow beer, and they haven't fucked it up and made it Bex. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but. In this day and age, and not being able to leave a fucking thing alone, the fact that this is still the way it's always been is impressive. I don't remember which ones, but I know the company, the Moosehead Company, does, um, instead of, you know, they import their beer to America, but they sell American beers to Canada themselves. They don't, they haven't sold out to a bigger company or anything is still an independent company they just distribute American beers to Canada so Canada you have them to thank for our shitty beers I've often wondered why it is that the imports that other countries decide to send here are always their shittiest beer I don't know it's like 
I have some family in Australia that I talk to occasionally. And Foster's has come up. And they will be the first to tell you that Foster's is the keystone of... <laughs> I, they laughed and started using my saying, Foster's Australian for piss. Yeah, pretty much. And everyone thinks, oh, it's good Australian beer. And Even the those... Australians are like, I'm, I'm not drinking that shit. <laughs> You must be crazy if you think we're drinking that shit. Makes me wonder if our imported beer in Europe or fucking Australia or whatever else go in and the expensive imported from America beer is either going to be Budweiser or fucking Natural Light. Probably Natural Light and Keystone, shit like that. Oh, you know Bud Light is shipped all over the fucking planet. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of beers, especially during wartime, were shipped over overseas. Like, I've seen lots of you know, historic photos of World War Two and Vietnam, where they have beer sent over. And well, in Budweiser, I'm talking today on a commercial scale, they send beer yeah. all over the world. Yeah. And Budweiser specifically, or Anheuser Busch. I'm not real sure when... I think they're owned by a European company as it is. Well, what I'm saying yeah. is I'm not real sure when uh, Budweiser was bought by Anheuser-Busch or if it was always a... So Budweiser has always been an Anheuser-Busch product. Anheuser-Busch okay. was started in St. Louis. So Anheuser-Busch created out. Budweiser. Yeah, and then sold out here recently to... It's now AB InBev, which is, I think, a Belgian company. Okay, so from the 20s till the end of the Cold War, when we were shipping cans of Budweiser purified water all over the planet, that was an Anheuser-Busch product as well, yeah. which was a brilliant marketing plan. Oh, yeah. Especially throughout the Depression, or not the Depression, the... Uh, Prohibition. Prohibition. Canning purified filtered water and sending it all over the fucking planet to places where you couldn't get clean water reliably at that point in time. Brilliant marketing. That's, you know, that's an episode we should do. Is what did the um, breweries do during Prohibition? Because now um, and Isaac Bush made <coughs> made sent out water and they did um. Near beer, you know, non-alcoholic beer. But, I'm also uh, told they did uh, ginger ale. Could be. I don't know. I know Pabst. Pabst made cheese, which um, mm -hmm. we would know today as, I believe, Velveeta. It's called Pabstette. Yeah, they claim that's a uh, creation of the craft company. Um, quite literally on a molecular level. The cheese that Paps made and the original Kraft Velveeta is the exact same molecules in the exact same sequence. Yeah. Now it's nowhere even close to that today, but we all know that. So, when you're enjoying your queso dip with Velveeta, you have Paps to think. <laughs> Another reason why the Blue Ribbon's the best. I can't even say that with a straight face. It's not my favorite beer anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's turns to the dark beer, side. That Newcastle still just has me, man. Yeah, uh, He's been turned to the dark side. It touched me in strange places. I thought I needed an adult. You probably did. The well, only fucker here was him, and he's less of an adult than I am. Depending upon the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what our sheriff, deputy, neighbor would say if one of these days I got drunk and ended up running through the front. I need an adult! <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably turn you home and say, figure it out. 
He doesn't tell me to shut up and go to bed or tease my ass. <laughs> Which laugh, turn around, go back in his house and leave me in the fucking yard. If that happens, I'll be sure to try to videotape that and add that to an episode. <sighs> Wouldn't be the first time I've been tased. Probably be the last. Hopefully it will. I heard that sucks. It does. No, I was not tased for any of the normal reasons. Uh, back in the day to legally carry a taser, before you could get the permit to buy or carry one, you had to be hit with one. So I went in and got tased so I could get the permit to carry it back when I did security. <clears throat> on a scale of, on a, you know, pain and just fucks up your body scale from 1 to 10, that was a 35. My brain didn't work right for three fucking days. Did you shit yourself? No, but I did piss myself a little bit. <laughs> Literally, you can't control any of your muscles. Every muscle in your body contracts, and you can't do anything. I hope I never have to figure that out. <laughs> and then a buddy of mine that used to be on Crane PD was given a taser, and he found out he could spark it without shooting it. And he thought it was fucking funny, and I got hit with that thing twice. <laughs> Once in Rick's shop while I was working on putting the stereo in. And once walking into Rapid Roberts when I didn't realize that fucker was sneaking up behind me. He got me in the back of the left leg. And, uh, as I was going through the door. <laughs> he thought it was funny as hell. Probably would have too. I had a friend one time that had one of those little, wasn't even a full size stun gun, it was just a little one that ran on the AAA batteries. Mm -hmm. That still would shock the fuck out of you. Huh? Back in the day, my buddy Brent and a whole bunch of us were buying the little cheapo tasers from the Red Barn and shit mm -hmm. like that, hitting each other with them. One of us showed up with this giant bastard. And everybody was afraid of it. And Brent was calling all of his pansies and grabbed it from his bud from the dude that brought it. Brent's leaning on his pickup with his legs crossed like this. He takes that taser and hits himself in this front leg with it. And just and when he does, that leg pulls back and sweeps the other one out from underneath him and he just hangs there for a second in the air next to his truck with nothing below him and you could hear this fucking thing sparking and when it stopped he just dropped and laid there. We thought he was dead for like 30 seconds. I guess I missed that one. Huh? It was priceless. <laughs> I don't think I was there that night. Huh? And then the That's night of crazy. his bachelor party which I still get shit for missing his wedding the day after his bachelor. Having a bachelor party the day before your wedding is stupid. But, uh... That's tradition, though. I mean, you got to. Not the night before. Well, yeah, yeah. You want to show up to the wedding, still fucked up. No, 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 no. I want an excuse to get just ridiculously tore the fuck up more than once. <coughs> well, you're married, that's good enough. I mean. Yeah, true enough. Can't find a reason to drink because of marriage. Fuck. What's anyway, the point? At his bachelor party, we got wrecked, and I didn't make his wedding the next day. <laughs> but one of our buddies, Johnny, said he was going to stay with us shot for shot all night. He lasted maybe an hour and a half into a six-hour night. Johnny was never good with his beer, with his alcohol, man. He started passing out, leaning up against shit, or every time he sat down, he'd pass out. Brent still had one of those little cheap tasers. Looked like a little pink cell phone. Took two 9 volt <laughs> batteries. And every time he'd notice Johnny sleeping somewhere, he'd just... <laughs> I have never seen anybody be drunk enough and pissed enough. 
he got hit with that for like the fifth time and stood straight up off the go, fuck you, and fell face first into the fucking table. <laughs> and before he hit the table, he was unconscious again. Oh, and just crazy. laid there on that wooden coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> It was bad. Oh, it was bad. Oh, jeez. That's funny. <laughs> I got drunk enough at that bachelor party. I passed out in my truck because I wouldn't drive home. In Brent's backyard, and they couldn't wake me up for the fucking wedding the next morning. <laughs> so that's the problem. You have a wedding here in the morning. Get have it in the afternoon at least, so at least you have a little bit of time to sober up. Their wedding was at eight fifteen in the morning. Who has a wedding at eight fifteen in the morning? Really, I'm not ever. I'm never awake at eight fifteen in the morning. I passed out so goddamn drunk. I don't honestly remember how the fuck I got to my truck at like six forty five in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you didn't make the wedding. You were still fucked up. All of us were still up at that point, <laughs> except Johnny. <laughs> of course. There was five or six of us there, and because my buddy Brent loved that Captain Morgan tattoo, I don't know whether you've ever tried it or not. Don't. I ordered two half gallons mm. that we emptied between the four or five of us, because Johnny didn't drink tattoo, in that one night, plus beer, plus I believe Redding brought some rum or some whiskey that we drank as well. Oh, good God. By the time that I was drunk, I was already far enough that it didn't matter what the fuck it was. Could have been rubbing alcohol. I wouldn't be giving a shit. <laughs> at, at a certain point, it doesn't matter whether it's liquor or gasoline. Pretty much, yeah. One of those things, we had a lot of parties, you know, back in the day. We're, we're, we're from a rural area. So, you have parties in fields. You have parties at the creek. You have... I've, I've attended keggers in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a field, that were just awesome. Although, until you get your buddy that wants to run through the fire, and then trips and catches their pant leg, and you have to put their pants on, because their pants are on fire. Biggest party I ever had out on the farm was several years ago, there was tornadoes that went through. And took out a shit ton of trees. One of our neighbors owned a salvage yard, had the great big forklift, mm. you know, all that. He came out and pulled all the trees that had come down together for me in one giant pile. We basically invited the entire town and set a 60 foot by 110 foot by 30 foot pile of trees on fire. <laughs> Oops. You could have seen that motherfucker. It was our property. Fuck him. But I swear to God, you could see that fire for space, and there was 400 rednecks with God knows how many cases of beer. <laughs> the next morning, there was more than 100 people unconscious laying on the fucking grass in that field. <laughs> oh, yeah. And honestly, I knew one of their names. Shit. <clears throat> Back when I was partying, even the cops were cool in the town I grew up in because, you know, they'd come and they'd bust a party if their kids underage drinking, which they shouldn't be. They'd steal their beer, confiscate it. But fuck, they'd show up to the after party later on in the middle of a field or something and they'd bring the beer and we'd drink it then, you know? <laughs> See, he grew up a town or two away from where I did and the town I grew up in the cops were a little different if we were having a party in town and they got called and actually the city cops came which didn't always happen there was two city cops not on duty at all times I mean there was two total so there was a pretty high likelihood you were dealing with county and they were assholes but <laughs> if it was a city cop he wouldn't even take the booze. They'd come up and say, shut the fuck up, and if I see any of these cars tonight, you're going to jail. Yeah. And that was that. 
As mm-hmm. long as you didn't try to get behind the wheel, they didn't fucking care. As long as nobody was getting hurt and nobody was trying to drive. Well, this is really the way it should be. I mean, let, let's face the facts. People are going to do what they want to do. and When you grow up in a small town, there's really nothing to do. Yep. Except for party and be stupid, but... As long as your, as long as your stupidity is still safe, you know. And realistically, in the in bitty rural town I grew up in, the cop being like that, especially the cop that was on in the evenings, made so much sense because we all liked him, so we all respected him. And when he had to say something to us, even if we weren't partying, if we were hanging out in the middle of town at what we called the tracks and we were being too loud or yeah. somebody was peeling out or whatever else. He could drive up and, hey guys, you need to do this and it was done. No questions asked. And if somebody was doing dumb shit, somebody was breaking into houses or destroying property or whatever else, half the time they didn't even have to investigate and look for who it was because of one of us saw who it was, they were left in a bloody crying pile waiting for the police to show up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So it, it really made sense for them to be cool. Yeah. But anyways. Off the subject. Back to this. Let's head logger. We both... I, li- I like it. It's not bad. It's not great. We both finished them... They're not hard to drink. No, they're quite easy to drink, actually. It's not... My thing about this being middle of the road, it's not that it has a bad flavor, it's that it basically has none. Yeah, kind of. It's, <clears throat> there's really not a lot to it. This is probably the lightest flavored beer we have tried yet. Yeah, this is probably the lightest flavor you can get north of a light beer. I mean, Actually, most light beers have more flavor. Michelob Ultra has more flavor than this does. Yeah. But that's not always necessarily a bad thing. So, yeah. If it's been made for 150 years and they're still going strong, it's probably worth a shot. Yeah. Canada, not bad. I think you can do better. I can't give the Frostbacks a plus one for this, but I can't minus them one either, so you're still sitting at zero. We'll have to find something else y'all are sending over here and try it. Well, unless we add Canadian Mist into all that, and then you're at minus 12. Don't send us Canadian Mist. No. Don't ever send that pussy shit over here again. Well, that's all I got to say. Me too. <laughs> Moosehead Lager, it, it's not bad, but it's not great. It's it, it's definitely worth a shot. Maybe you'll find something about it you like more than we do. Maybe you'll hate it. Let us know in the comments. Um, and we're running out of ideas, so shoot us some suggestions of what beers you'd like to see us do. Yeah. And remember, the only people dumb enough to drink and drive voted for Hillary. Have a good one.